Hi right, guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the quaint landscape of Kilve Beach, which is behind me, a location that I've personally never been to, but I've heard good things about it for seascape and landscape photography. Now, the plan in this video is to have a rather relaxed uh, couple of hours shooting with a special camera that I have in my bag that I'll introduce to you in a minute. Now we're about, I guess, two hours off of sunset and it's been stormy all afternoon, but we are looking like we might get a nice sunset. Yeah, this beach is famous for having lots of fossils, lots of crazy rock formations. And uh, so basically the plan is to have a wander around this beach, try and find some details, shoot those, and then pray that we get a good sunset. Um, I've got someone joining me on this video. He's over there prepping for his first photography vlog on his channel. We'll uh, catch up with him in a minute. But right now, we're gonna head down onto the beach and uh, try and find our first shot. And also, I will introduce you to the camera that I'll be using, uh, using today. So let's crack on. So the beast I'm shooting on today is the Hasselblad 907X CFV2 50C. Probably the camera with the world's most confusing name if you haven't done four or five takes like I've just done. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a very unusual camera. It is a 50 megapixel digital back, uh, which is this part of the camera here. And then the front bit here is the 907X part of the camera. And this basically, this offering from Hasselblad allows you to use that digital back on, I believe, a whole host of Hasselblad cameras from 1957, on, uh, 1957 onwards. I've been wanting to shoot with it for a long time since it was announced, but thankfully Clifton Cameras has, have allowed me to take it out today. And so I figured I'd bring it down to Kilv Beach because this is a place where I'm gonna to need to take my time and find compositions. This isn't a camera for run and gun photography. It is very much a blast from the past in terms of how you use it. You've got to be very slow and methodical. Um, I'll show you around the camera in a second. But yeah, I'm very excited to use it today. So um, we are in this very strange landscape of Kilve Beach right now. And we're about an hour and a half away from sunset. So I'm going to go and find my first composition and then show you how this camera operates. Right, so I did find my first composition and just as I was setting up to film this little bit to camera, big bank of cloud rolled in and it's ruined the shot. While I am waiting for the sun to hopefully reappear, I've just fired off a quick uh, kind of test shot to test out the uh, detail and resolution on this camera just by shooting some of this uh, seaweed here. I know it's not the most interesting shot in the world, but I want to show off the detail that this camera has as that is one of the major selling points of this camera. Apart from the stunning design, the only other reason really you would buy this camera is if you wanted to shoot um, high res, beautiful images and or you had old uh, Hasselblad film cameras that you wanted to use the digital back with. Now, the major downside of this camera, and Thomas Heaton covered it in one of his videos, is just how finicky it is and how slow it is to set up and take an actual image. There's only one dial on the front and that controls your aperture and your shutter speed. Everything else you have to set in camera on the menu system before you take the shot. Now, depending on what style of photography you do, this might not be an issue. So if you are a landscape photographer, it's not too bad. 
Um, you generally have a little bit of time to work with, but if you're a running gun photographer, this camera, yeah, no chance. Uh, that and the fact that the autofocus is very slow being contrast only. But um, I'm hoping that the images that come out of it are very nice and that you enjoy them but uh, I'm just enjoying shooting with it it's, it's definitely an experience it's slowing me down it's reminding me of the old school days of shooting with film so uh, I do hope that the light changes and we get a bit of a sunset but uh, for now I'm just going to carry on and find my next composition Right, so this is my second composition and basically I've completely abandoned the sunset. We are just under a thick blanket of fog. But looking back this way, uh, down the coast, there's actually a really, really nice composition. Now, I don't know whether you can see, well you probably can see on the camera, you can see these rock formations uh, that form channels where all the water gathers. It just leads as a perfect leading line down the coast. You've got all those cliffs in the background and actually you've got some really nice moody dramatic skies. Now this is the best shot of the day so far and so what I'm shooting on is the 45mm, I um, can't remember what it's called, XCD 45P, I think that's the lens, which is a 35mm equivalent. And one of the beautiful things about this camera is you can flip that screen right up and uh, I can see now that yeah it's looking really moody and dramatic. F11, 15th of a second, two second timer. Let's take the shot. Voila. All right, just spent about, I don't know, half an hour wandering around the beach, taking a few different various shots, a few different compositions. Um, now we are about 20 minutes away from sunset and I am glad to announce that the skies are parting um, and we might get a little bit of colour. Now, 20 minutes in landscape photography is a lifetime. Light can change rapidly between now and the sun actually crossing the horizon. Uh, but I found the composition that I'm going to aim to shoot for sunset. It's right behind me over my shoulder. You can see there we've got two bodies of water in the middle. We've got this jagged rock sticking up and out of it. and. The plan is that when the sun drops over the horizon, um, you can see on the horizon there is, yeah, there's going to be no colour there, but these high out clouds should in theory catch a little bit of that colour um, and that in turn should reflect in that body of water uh, with the slow shutter. So fingers crossed that's going to happen, uh, I'm not going to move off from this spot now, I'm just going to watch and see what happens and also keep an eye on the tide coming in because I do not want to get stuck on this rock with that camera, which isn't mine. So <laughs> let's hope that uh, we get a bit of colour and get a bang in sunset. Here we have a wild Craig Ivanchuk, who's also jumped on the vlog game. How is your vlogging going? How's your YouTube experience going? You're doing quite well, aren't you? Yeah, so I'm doing a van build in case any of you know. Um, that's going pretty well. But being the opposite side of the camera, as I've probably said in a lot of videos you've seen of Craig's, I don't enjoy it, but it's getting a little bit more easier, should I say, like feel a bit more weight off my shoulders. Um, but today we're out doing this down here, completely new for me in this scene. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of work. So I appreciate what you guys go through, what Craig goes through on a daily basis of all our travels. It's stressful, but other than that, yeah, it's going, it's going good. So I'm gonna wait for the sun to go down and then hopefully tie up this and get home. Alrighty, we are out of time. Um, yeah, sadly, the color did not explode into the fire sky that I'd hoped it would. Uh, saying that, I did quite enjoy the uh, final image I got there. Definitely looked quite nice on the back of the camera. Hopefully, 
uh, the edit did it justice. But yeah, anytime you go out and shoot landscape photographer, you are at the mercy of your conditions. And today they just didn't uh, turn out as I'd hoped. Saying that, I was super grateful and excited to have had the experience of shooting with the Hasselblad. Uh, I wouldn't run out and buy one myself, nor would a lot of people. Saying that, if you do have the money and you enjoy a kind of classic experience when it comes to taking photos, it is a stunningly beautiful piece of kit. And judging by the images on the back of the camera, it does take fantastic looking photographs. Like I said in the video earlier though, it's not the quickest thing to use. Um, it's not the most intuitive, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's for a niche group of people. I'm just happy to have had the experience to shoot with it. As for this location, uh, I think I got some images I liked. They ain't gonna win landscape photography, uh, landscape photographer of the year. Um, but I think I've come away with at least one image I like and that's all you can really hope for when you come out and do landscape photography. But I'd definitely come back down here. There's tons and tons of potential. We left it a little bit late to be fair to get down here. And so hunting for compositions was a bit of a rush, but um, yeah, I would definitely like to come back and explore this further. There's a myriad of different shots to be had. I hope you enjoyed this vlog anyway. Massive thanks to Clifton Cameras for letting me borrow that camera again. And uh, yeah, massive thanks to you guys for watching, Craig for helping shoot some B-roll as well. Go check out his channel. Um, we are gonna announce an awesome trip coming up at the end of the month, so we're both gonna be filming that. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I've got lots and lots of content planned now. Um, lockdown and all that starting to ease, and I'm really, really excited to uh, get going with it all. But anyway, I will catch you on the next one. Take care. Oh, take two. <laughs>